All right, guys, so we're out today on a scout, me and some of my friends, and we're in this heavy pine area, and I came across a great resource to, do, to use with my primitive caveman series. And what that is, it's obviously, it was a deer bone that was drugged here, maybe by a coyote or something like that. So there's three different parts of the bone here, um, the two lower parts of the leg and then the scapular. So that was obviously the front um, hind of the deer. So we're gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna collect this stuff, we're gonna take it back to the pond area that we have on a new property, and we're gonna talk about how we're gonna use these resources in the series. So stay tuned, we'll get back with you in a little bit. All right guys, so we're back at the pond after we do the short video segment of me finding the bone and gathering it. And actually on the way back in the scout, I actually found another leg bone from an animal. And this is a little bit older, so I'm gonna, I threw it in my bag because I might be able to actually use this during this process of making these items. So, like I said, I gathered a bunch of different bones that I initially found, and I'm just gonna go through them quick. The reason that we're coming, I, I said initially that I wanna come by the pond is, bones are very hard material to work with if you don't have modern day files or grinders or anything like that. So if you're using just stones that you find, you need to preferably soak them in water and soften them up. So what I like to do is I like to work them as much as I can, which I'm gonna show you in a second, and then soak them in water. And here we're gonna just use the pond and soften them up. Once they're softened up, then I'll do my grinding or get in my edge, whatever I'm gonna use for each tool. So to start, this scapula bone, um, there's a bunch of different things you can use with this, but you need to think ahead a little bit. And in my case, because some of the projects that I wanna do, like we talked about in the introductory of this series, was making a haversack, making moccasins, all with natural material. So when I either trap or kill an animal, I'm gonna need something to scrape the hide. So I'm gonna use this as a hide scraper. And as you can see, it's a little bit rugged. On the outside, it seems like it's been laying in the woods for a while. So I'm not gonna do anything with this as far as with rock or anything. Now I'm gonna just put this right in the pond and let it soften up. Then I'm gonna work this nice and smooth and get a little bit of an edge on it. I'll probably grind off this piece that's sticking out there and I'll have a scraper that I can use for by hand to scrape down the hides. But you always need to think ahead, like I said. One option with this could have been to smooth out this edge and then put ridges in it, and then you have yourself a saw, a hand saw you can use. Or if you're in a real long-term type situation and you're with using primitive methods, you can always make a hoe out of this by attaching a stick to use to dig up earth or anything like that. So I'm gonna place this in a pond behind me here just to let that start to soak. Bones pour, so it'll soak in that water pretty quickly. I don't have to leave it in there too long. Uh, next, this is a pretty heavy duty thick bone that I found here. And the lower leg bone actually has, there's two bones here. So what I wanna make, because of the projects that I'm working on, I need some needles and I need an awl to punch the leather out. So I'm hoping that this outer bone right here that's nice and thin right now, I can separate that without cracking it too bad. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna hit it with a rock, you'll see here, just to crack it. If I can get two needles and an all out of just that, that's what I'm gonna do. Then I can save the rest of these bones for things that I might need in the future. If that doesn't work out, I'm gonna take this bone here and I'm gonna crack this in the middle. And then I'm gonna file this down by grinding it on some stones and stuff to actually get um, nice and sharp as my all. So, so to separate this bone, all that I'm going to do is I just picked up some stones. Now I have a stump here, I also have a larger rock that I can work on. Either way will work and it won't be too bad. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take one of my stones and I'm just gonna put it in the middle here because I can't really separate this by hand. It seems like it's too tightly attached yet. So I'm gonna just take my pointy stone, see if I can just separate that, which is starting to come apart already. And this is just some stuff that you guys, you just have to work with, and see if you can get it to do what you want it to do. So, okay, so we broke that off. I'm gonna hopefully, like I said, keep these bones off to the side for future projects. So, as you can see, that just snapped. So I'm gonna keep this right now is one needle. 
two needles, and then I'm going to make this into my awl. So I'm going to soak all three of these pieces along with the other bone that I just stuck in the pond. And once they get saturated and softer, we'll get back on video. I'm going to show you how we're going to shape these things and finish out this project. Okay guys, so I just wanted to show you this quickly. These are my bones that I have soaking in the water and how I judge when they're ready to work. Of course you can leave them in a very long time, but if you're sort of in a time crunch or you want to get working on them and you don't want to keep sitting around, something like this starts to become real, real flexible. So if you can see, let's get that on camera. That's actually starting to bend that's and it's pretty thin so that's pretty much ready to go these other bones still a little stiff so i'm going to leave them soak a little bit longer but that's starting to get flexible too so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to pull this stuff out one at a time i'm going to start to work on them i'll get some close-up footage of it and then we'll talk about how we're going to finish off our needles and all our all and our hide scraper All right, so I pulled my first bone out of the water, and what I did was I collected while I was letting them soak. They soaked probably for about an hour. The other ones, the needle and the awl, I'm gonna let them soak for a little bit more, but I'm gonna start working on this tool. I gathered two rocks. One is real coarse, one's a little bit smoother, and I'm just gonna start to work this bone. And if it seems like it's still not soft enough, I'll put it back in the water. But it's a pretty straightforward process. It just takes a little bit of time. I just wanna work that, and I'm working this on a coarser, Stone right now and I'm just gonna work that till I get it good and flat and it's actually coming out pretty quick here I want to get this as my scraper quite flat across the bottom I don't want too much of a bend although it's not gonna hurt if it is like that a little bit so I'm just gonna keep working this on a rock. Once I get it where I want, I'm gonna go on a smoother rock, and then I'm gonna put a little bit of a bevel on. I don't want it extremely sharp. I don't wanna cut through the hide. The same as if you would buy any type of modern day fleshing knife. You don't want it extremely sharp, but you want it sharp enough to cut through all that fat and membrane that's on the hides. So I'm gonna keep working with this. Once I pull out my other pieces, we'll get some close up footage of me working on that. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna finish off my needles, because I'm not gonna go with the traditional needle like you would think today with the hole in. I just think that that's, it, they're just tough to work with when you're working with uh, real sinew. So I'm gonna make them a little bit different and my awl is just gonna be real pointy on one end so I can drive through that hand leather. So I'm gonna keep working with this. We'll run the film for a little while and then we'll do some close up footage of working with the needles and then we'll finish off the video. So as you can see the rock, I'm on the smooth rock now with this hide scraper that I'm making. And this rock just so happened to be more of a triangle shape. But the good thing with that, if you find rocks and you're looking around for rocks like this, you know, you can use this curvature of this rock to get different angles. Just because the way this bone shaped, if this was any other shape, I really couldn't get a nice flat uh, bevel on this. So with this edge, I really can get in there and get it working the way I want it to. So this is my hide scraper. I made fast work of this. Of course, like I said, this is a coarse stone, which this just ate the bone apart because it was softened. And this smooth stone did a great job finishing and polishing it off. So I will be surely get a close up of this I'm gonna get my other pieces out and start working with them. So this is the awl that I'm gonna make. Basically, I just wanna drive this to 
to a real sharp thin point. So using my coarse stone, just starting to work that down to a point now. If it gets to the point that it doesn't seem like I'm making any progress, then by all means put it back in the water and get it softer. we're eating away at that bone pretty quickly. So I'm going to thin this out a little bit more through here and then take it on my smooth stone, smooth stone to finish it out. So as I continue with my bone all, I am I work both sides down to a point, and now I'm starting to work both sides in. So it's actually going to be almost as if it's a sail needle or like a leather glover's needle. It's going to have a square tip on it, and that'll help punch through that leather a little bit better. Better. So we just keep working it, and just getting a good sharp edge on that. just about where I want. Now the thing with an awl is, like I stated earlier in the video, this would be great for an awl because it's you have a lot of power to drive through. But as far as for a deer hide, raccoon hide, fox, anything like that, this awl, I'm gonna get more than enough leverage in my hand. There's a nice spot here the way the bone shape, I can get my finger in and drive real hard using my thumb, I could push through. So I'm gonna clean this bone up just a little bit and that's not even really necessary, just for aesthetic value. So I'm gonna pull my needles out and get to work on those. So as you see, what I'm doing with my needle, I broke it down a little bit because it was a little thick. Now it is soft, so of course I can just start to work that on my rock. Now I'm not even using my coarse stone for this because this is pretty fine, so I don't want to overdo it. Now one thing that you need to keep in mind when you're making your needles is they need to be quite symmetric all the way through, just for the fact that this is what's actually going to be running your sinew through your item. So you don't want it, the shape it is now would be a nightmare, it's never gonna get through. Of course you could punch it with the awl we just made, but I wanna even all this out. So I'm gonna sit, take my time, keep grinding. If it gets to the point that I feel like it's getting hard, then I'll throw it back in the water and let it go a little bit further. So I'm gonna work both my needles down and before I show you how we're gonna attach the sinew, I'll get the video back on. So here's my needle that I've been working on if you can see that. I got it nice and symmetrical all the way through. Nice real sharp point on the end and I can always touch that up. That's the beauty of working with bone. You can always touch that up just a little bit if you need to. Okay so you would just touch that up get a little bit sharper if you're losing that the sharpness or anything like that. Now there's a couple different things you can do. If you nap an arrowhead you can put it on an arrow shaft and you can use it almost as a hand drill if you want to drill a uh, hole through your bone. 
I haven't found that to be too successful in any cases that I've tried that. Uh, the hole is either doesn't, it's not big enough to run my sinew through or it um, cracks the bone and ends up not working too well. So what I found that works better than anything I found so far is to actually notch out the top of this needle. And what I mean by that is if you think of a straight board and you put two notches in and then I just tie a half hitch uh, around that and it's usually enough because I'm going to pre-punch all my holes anyway with my awl that's more than enough to get my needle work through and pull it through. So to do that, all I'm going to do is take the corner of my stone and decide how far down I want to go. And I'm just going to work just nice and slow to start that first groove. Back and forth, back and forth, just like this. Okay, now I'm going to get a good close up when I'm done here. But I'm going to go down, work a little bit more and then just work back and forth like this to start cutting my groove in. So, we'll keep working with this, just to get the grooves in both sides. And once this first side's done, it has a cut. You can see that. Start working on the second side. And you just need to be careful because these needles aren't the thickest things, so you don't want to overwork it and break your the top off. But the flip side to this also is once you do that, if this would break off during a sewing process, just move further down the needle and you can set up the same thing. You don't have to get out an arrow point and try to redrill a hole or anything like that. So I'm going to just touch this up the rest of the way around a little bit on the front side. A little bit on the back side just to make a nice edge for that to catch on when I tie that sinew on and like I said I'm gonna have all my leather pre-punched with the awl that we just made so there's one of my needles so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get my other piece out finish my second needle and I'll show you all my tools okay guys so I'm finished all my bone tools I ended up with an awl a hide scraper and two needles. The good thing here is I still have a lot of bone left from that stuff that I gathered earlier this morning. So thinking a little bit ahead of what resources you need and what you need to make with is a huge benefit especially when like in this series I don't have anything I can't go out and hunt I'm gonna to need to find this stuff so I didn't need to hunt anything I found this bone I can make a ton of more tools with this and with that being said just always make sure when you're working with items like this, you think ahead what you're going to need them for and specifically focus your energy to making just those items. So I'm going to get a close-up shot of this. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more. Thanks, guys.